Okay, this is a test. We started the live stream, and so a sound check. We'll get started here in a couple of minutes. Those that are already tuned in to our live stream, hopefully the sound is working okay. Yep, again, good evening and welcome those tuning in on live stream. We'll get started in a couple of minutes at 6.30. Thank you. Again, welcome. One last sound check for those joining us on live stream. We'll get started in one more minute here. Good evening, everyone. At this time, I'd like to call to order the March 15th, 2021 regular meeting of the Central York School Board to order. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Kessler, could you take the roll? Gemma? Here. Grothy? Here. Guth? Here. Johnson? Here. King? Here. Lewis? Here. Strickler? Here. Wagner? Here. Thank you. At this time, it's recommended that the board approve the March 15, 2021 regular meeting agenda as presented. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any votes to the contrary? Motion passes. Okay. Um, before we get started tonight, I just want to make an announcement to the public since we've changed things up a little bit with citizen comments. Anyone who's uh, intending to make a citizen comment will be doing that via Zoom. So if you check board docs, you'll be able to see that link, raise a hand, and we'll be happy to acknowledge you. At this time, 
I would like to recommend that the board approve the, min the minutes for our February meetings, 5.01, 5.02, 5.03, and 5.04. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, I just have a quick question. Yes, Ms. Grothy. The um, policy, we do not have we only have written minutes for that meeting so far. We don't have a recording for this meeting, correct? Correct, but going forward, we will. Okay, yep. great, thank you. Okay, anything else? Vote to the contrary. Okay, motion passes. Okay, moving along, we're gonna start with our educational focus. Thank you, Mrs. Johnson. Uh, Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Grove. Thank you, ma'am. Tonight's educational focus will be on the Central York of Edom Clubs. I'd like to introduce Mr. Brian Heisey. Uh, Mr. Heisey is currently a middle school science teacher and newly elected board president for the statewide of Eden Club. Mr. Heisey. So before I start, I just wanna say thank you to Mr. Grove for uh, asking me to present tonight and thank you to you guys for actually having me. Um, so you are going to hear, um, like Mr. Gross said, I was recently appointed the president of the board of the statewide of Edom, and that actually happened in January. Um, so I have a lot of new roles, a lot of exciting roles, but tonight you're going to hear um, what the, the history of Edom is through, for the state of Pennsylvania, and you'll hear kind of some of the stuff that we have done or are planning on doing with the state of Edom, and I'm going to focus it in on centrals of Edom, the history of that and what we've kind of done so far, even within the pandemic that, that's been going on at Central. So if you wanna to go to the next slide, Mr. President. So this is Taryn, um, and I wanna say thank you to, I had six students who um, really stepped up for me. I asked them to um, make videos because as most of you know, the middle school um, recently went remote because of cases, and so I was kind of scrambling. But these six uh, learners really came together and each of them I asked, just so you know ahead of time, um, what does Evita mean to you? And why do you think mental health is important? So we're gonna start with Taryn. Um, so whenever you're ready. This is Taryn Mariano and I'm in the Central York Middle School Evita Club. To me, Evita means family. With Evita, you can always count on to listen to your problems and find solutions. You know, in the video, you'll hear, I got your back. And I feel like that's so true because the video supports you through the thick and thin and you always find solutions. I feel like it's really important to raise awareness about mental illnesses because not many kids or adults know about it. And so we need to know what it is and how to cope with it. So I put this um, up on the slide from Harvard Graduate School of Education. I'm fairly sure most of you have heard something similar to this before, but I'm just going to read it to you. Um, there, are, there may be nothing more important in a child's life than a positive and stable relationship with a caring adult. For students, a positive connection to at least one school adult, whether a teacher, counselor, sports coach, or other school staff member, can have tremendous benefits that include reduced bullying, lower dropout rates, and improved social emotional capacities. Um, so I chose this because at the heart of what Avidam is, um, is this idea. Um, not only as adults, but Avidam is a completely student run group. So all of the ideas come from the kids, the adults that are the advisors kind of just sit back and are there to guide. So. As adults in the building, we have a tremendous responsibility, not just to teach the learners, but to also kind of mentor them and help them feel accepted. And I'm gonna kind of um, pop back at the end of the presentation on the importance of the social emotional capacities, but we'll save that for later. So this is Thomas. Again, I'm gonna kind of just say, great job, Thomas, ahead of time. I'm gonna let him go. I'm Thomas Boyne, and I'm a member of the word of Vita means I've got your back. To me, that means that we are a community that looks out for one another and welcomes anyone, even if they're struggling. I like that Vita is a safe space to talk about how you feel and still be accepted. Mental health is important because when you are sad, depressed, or anxious, it can affect your everyday life in a negative way. It's important to be aware of your mental health and get help if you need it. Thank you. Um, so, like Thomas said, Avidam um, comes from a word that we 
it was actually made up from, I believe it was Latin roots, and it means I've got your back. And um, it's a, if you look up there, it's an expression of reassurance. And at the core of Avidam, the, the phrase, I got your back, is there. And as you will see from all of the learners that share tonight, um, I didn't put them up to this. I, I'm hoping that you can tell their commitment to the club by just watching them speak. So a little bit about Avidam in general. So back in 2003, um, there was a student at Calico High School who died by suicide, um, and the students wanted to do something. They came together with staff members. They, they wanted to do something, and they actually formed a group called Helping Hand, and that was the first um, group of learners that kind of got together in order to create a club to do something because they didn't want those empty seats there. Um, so it kept going in about 2007, it was renamed to Avidam. In 2010, we became a nonprofit organization and currently there are about 150 clubs in elementary, middle and high schools throughout the state of Pennsylvania and beyond. And even colleges, I just talked to um, a group at Millersville who's super interested in setting, Millersville University, setting up a college club. So at the core of Avidam, um, when we first started, we looked at four protective factors, and they are access to care, self-esteem, connectedness, and life skills. So access to care just simply means at the individual locations that these clubs are at, are students able to access effective care if they need, and are they supported if they seek help? Self-esteem is exactly what it sounds like. How do these people at these uh, locations where the clubs are set up feel about themselves? And how does the school culture either serve to build up or possibly bring them down, which we look at at every place we start a club? With connectedness, um, we talk about how does every student in school feel connected to his or her educators, to the school as a community, and does every student have someone he or she can trust or depend on? And then life skills, which I personally believe is one of the most important of the four, is talks about how is um, a student's, what is a student's ability to cope, um, and how do they adapt to change, and how can we help them use all of the things they are learning for critical life skills that they will need as they continue to grow. So every year, the VDM Club for this state comes out with different campaigns. And the campaigns um, will cover each of these four things, acceptance, appreciation, acknowledgement, and caring. And I really want to talk about two of them up there, the appreciation and the acknowledgement. So appreciation um, talks about how people, do people actually notice me or am I not important? And at every place, whenever I give a presentation for Avidam, we always want to make sure that you approach and you know the words you are saying. Because if you don't know the words you are saying and you're just speaking, then what happens is you tend not to show that appreciation to others. The other thing is acknowledgement. With acknowledgement, do people notice, or sorry, yeah, do, um, do people notice me and what I'm doing is acknowledgement and appreciation I meant to say was, do I matter? Do I matter to those around me? So this is Emma. Um, Emma actually serves on our youth board, um, which is a group of students from all across Pennsylvania um, that uh, meet. And what's, what's cool about the youth board is they collaborate to create these events that we then push out to all the schools. So I'll let her share. It gives me a chance to make a difference, not only for myself, but for others. Now more than ever, mental health concerns cannot be ignored. Avita allows for learning opportunities surrounding mental health issues and offers strategies for coping with these. I love that Avita always has my back, and I want to make sure I offer someone the comfort of knowing I will do the same. So a little bit about our organizational goals for this year and a little bit about the past two. So every year we put on a conference. Now, unfortunately, last year the conference didn't happen. But this year uh, we're back in full force, and instead of a day conference, we chose to do a, um, an hour Zoom conference. We have a speaker coming uh, to talk about um, how you can stay positive in a pandemic. Um, her speech is fantastic. Um, and what we did is we polled on Instagram as many kids as possible, and they gave us the times to hold the event. So we are holding it April 8th and April 10th. They only would have to come to one. It's free. 
Um, I think the April 8th is in the evening and April 10th is a Saturday, it's in the afternoon. And then to cover those that can't attend, um, we're gonna do an on-demand version that will be released the following week. Um, last year, we did our first uh, Mental Health Awareness Week 5K, and it was a virtual 5K. And I'm going to throw Dr. Snell out there. He did the run, or sorry, you did the bike. You did the bike, right? Um, and yeah, so this year, um, it's a run, walk, bike again. Um, and Mental Health Awareness Week is from the 3rd to the 9th through the 10th. And if you'd sign up, you get uh, free swag from Avidum, and you also then get to put your time in and to compare. Um, and that was a really successful event. I kind of touched on the Youth Advisory Board. Again, that's a, a group of uh, students from all across the state of Pennsylvania, different school district, different grade levels. We've got middle school to high school, um, and it's just a pleasure to work with them. Um, we've been working via Zoom, and the ideas they can come up with, you'll hear more about that a little later tonight. The Hollister Grant we just received, um, so we have a curriculum, and I gave you a paper on in front of you. Um, it's very brief, and if you ever, if you have more questions, I'd be more than willing to meet with you to talk about our curriculum. But we came out with a curriculum a while ago, but it was not research-based. So finally, this grant is allowing us to have a research-based uh, curriculum. And long story short, there's going to be a study throughout the state of Pennsylvania with 12 schools that will like basically go to firm up uh, our curriculum and make it a nationally recognized curriculum. A Vedum Friend of Friend, we're pushing out in the fall, and it's kind of like a mentoring type program. However, it has a, a component of what's called QPR training in it. And if you don't know what QPR training is, it's a question, persuade, and refer. And what that means is it will teach kids, if I would go up to Mr. Grove, for example, and say, I'm, I'm just not, I'm not doing well. Like, I don't know what to do. It will mentor kids to help other kids get help and they will know the signs, they will know what to say, and they get it like a certificate. It will be, uh, it, it's gonna be a great thing. And then finally we have, um, over the summer, we're gonna work with some uh, educators in the area to, to really beef up our Little Avedum program, which goes from kindergarten to sixth grade. So by the end of the summer, we should really have a completely revamped K to 12, uh, both curriculum and programming. So this is Shreya. And she is an, also a member of the youth board. And what I like about Shreya is she is always full of energy, which I think you will see, and I'm, I'm just gonna let her go. My name is Shreya Chulo, and I'm from the Century Middle School's Abidum Club. And today, I'm just gonna be telling you about it. First off, why is Abidum important? Abidum is important because different students learn many different things. For example, this year, we've already learned about LGBTQ rights and different mental health illnesses, and much, much more. Different people get to share their stories, and I think that helps kids feel less alone. Also, I've joined the Youth Advisory Board for Avita. It's awesome. You get to share your ideas, and you actually get to build upon them. Mental health is important for a variety of reasons. It affects your physical health, and just in general, how you interact. Avita helps many different kids go through many different things. Thank you for your time. I'm going to jump right into Abby. Abby's also a member of the Youth Advisory Board, and she, one of our campaigns that we did this past winter was we put out to all the schools across Pennsylvania, we're going to make masks. It's a contest. We're going to make masks. You got to make masks for us. Um, she was one of the three finalists that won, and I'll show you her mask later, but here's Abby. I'm Abby, and I'm part of the CYMS VM Club. Besides the VM Club, I'm also part of the Youth Advisory Board. I really enjoy doing this because I get to collaborate with other VM members from other schools who share my passion for VM. We do many things. For example, we are in the process of coming up with a friend to friend program. During this program, we will teach teens our age how to help their friends who may have a mental illness. We also just ran a winter mask campaign. I even submitted a design that was then placed in the top three winners. You can buy all three masks at the Vita Merchandise Store. So the next slide is her. This is her mask that won. And if you notice, the hand actually, it's kind of it's kind of cramped up there, but it, it's spread out more on the mask. It says Avidum. I've got your back. The second mask that won was this one. And then the third mask is this. And that's actually a hand as well. It says I've got your back. So they turned out great. Um, and those will be coming in shortly. I wanted to have them for you, but I apologize. They're just not, they're not here yet. So if you're interested, you can let me know. Um, so history at, at uh, CYSD. So 
The Middle School of Edom Club started around 2017, and for those of you that can remember back at that time, we had a pretty um, intense security thing going on in the community with our school. A uh, whole community came together, and um, it was a perfect time for Vedum to launch. Uh, long story short, we ended up coming uh, together with the high school, the middle school. We supported everybody involved. We had like a luncheon for all of the different police and the, the agents that were involved, and it really built our community up, which set us on a track for a fantastic Avedum Club. Um, currently, um, we have 75 uh, learners that are in the middle school club, which is probably the most of any middle school in the state. Um, usually, um, in a non-pandemic, I'm over 100, just to give you an idea. Um, some of the things that we've done, what I told you it's 100% student-led. Every other year, we do hands across the school. Every student in the building gets to trace their hand on a yellow piece of paper, which is kind of the traditional thing of Edom does to represent yourself. They put their name on it, and I hang them across the um, cafeteria. If you Google of Edom in middle school, you'll see a news article that was out a couple years ago, and every two years uh, we do that. Uh, winter Wishes happens, obviously, kind of around the winter where... Uh, learners can send little positive messages and attach a piece of candy to the car to give. We were not able to do that this year. Um, we, you, we do staff appreciation cards all the time. Uh, Vedum Heroes, uh, we uh, have in the past picked both faculty members and students who we feel show those four characteristics that I talked about earlier, and we promote them on the announcements. Positive signs throughout the building. Luncheons, I said. Uh, Two years ago, we did PSSA stress kits, so we threw in like stress balls and the bracelets and some stickers and pencils, um, and it really like eased a little bit of the stress. You could feel it in the building; it like eased a little bit of the stress. Um, and then Zoom meetings, I put up there because during the pandemic, I was not totally sure how it would go, but the the learners have really stepped it up, and we are a thriving club at the middle school. One thing I didn't put up there that I have in front of you is a postcard. Uh, last year. Um, the learners designed this based on our um, idea behind the middle school respect, responsibility, and uh, community integrity, which I think is on the back as well. And so every teacher gets these, and when they see a learner doing something that reflects um, something positive, they fill this out, send it to the office, Dr. Harper calls them down, meets with the kids, and then sends the postcard home so that the parents can also then see what a good job they have done. So again, just goes to build up the community at the middle school. All right, and um, this is my last learner. So this is Zermaya, and she is going to talk about what Avita means to her. My the Avita plot to me means I can play a part in helping out the community in many different ways. I can also make a change in people's lives by helping them with their mental health. Mental health is important to me because it can affect your happiness and how you feel. When you don't have good mental health, it may cause you to not be able to live a happy life. This is why it's very important for your mental health to stay good. Um, and on a side note with her, I remember the first meeting we had this year. She came up to me. She's new. She's a seventh grader. She came up to me and she's like, Mr. Heise, this, this, this club's great. I love this club. Um, so, and that just, you know, you have these stories um, that are just fantastic. So WGAL did a couple articles, or uh, actually not articles, um, videos about VM clubs throughout the state. Um, we are in the bottom uh, left there, um, showing off our postcards. And, so, and this is kind of our contact information. Um, we we're on every platform, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Um, website for the general groups at the top. Um, we have our own Instagram uh, for Central as well. And, you know, I hope you, that you are willing to join our movement because, like I said at the beginning, we do not want to have any seat left empty. Um, back to the part about social emotional learning that I said at the beginning. So the governor uh, kind of mandated a day uh, in March here. I think it's, it's March 26th. And on March 26th, um, we are going to... Um, we're supposed to do something that involves social emotional learning and part of it is like understanding and managing emotions, setting and achieving positive goals, feeling and showing empathy, um, reestablishing and maintain, maintaining positive relationships and making responsible decisions. Um, all, of, all of which really fit well under the umbrella of VEDAM. At the middle school, um, what we are looking to do is our um, 
responsive classroom uh, really addresses all of that. So we're going to have lessons. Um, I'm in the process of looking stuff up to give to Dr. Harper, but we're going to try and really focus on some lessons that um, can fit in that. And I'm going to try and have some Avita members talk about different things, not just that day, but the whole week that week um, to really drive the idea of how important social emotional learning is. And then finally, I'm super excited for, um, we have a bullet bullying summit for secondary uh, coming up on March 25th where we'll get a chance, I'll be able to bring some kids from the Vedum Club and share what we have been doing with um, both upper admin and uh, other teachers, just to, just to show them again the importance of this club, especially during the pandemic. So that's my presentation. I hope you also enjoy your wristbands there. Um, inside is the suicide hotline number and also the text number. That's what those numbers are. So thank you. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for coming in and sharing and bringing your fine students with you. That was really wonderful to watch. Very, very uplifting, especially in such trying times. Um, at this point, if anybody has any questions for Mr. Heise, and thank you for also for, you know, <clears throat> stepping up as our newly elected board president, that we were going to have the pulse on all of this, which is yeah, really yeah, great yeah. For, um, <laughs> for our students to have thank you. that exposure. Thank you. Yeah. Ms. Gass. I'm just curious, is there any follow up with these kids or do you have any idea of how many kids have been mentored or whatever the terminology yes yeah, so um so now each each club obviously has their own ways of dealing with things so um we i know for a fact that the students that are in our middle school club have gone on um and have done things at the high school and then also in the in some of the some of the high schools in the area and this is before my time with the state they have gone on and started their clubs in colleges that they go to so the trickle up effect is really strong with this club i'm, I'm talking about the the students who have had problems okay. and that the avidum club members have reached out Two. I see what you do mean. you have any sense of so I of that? I do so I would say that in the specific instances where one of the Avita members kind of reached out to help let's say a friend those friends we can funnel into the right to the right um, resources whether it's a guidance counselor whether it's an outside mental health um, I personally um, just because of our roles as teachers have made calls home. Um, on students' behalf, and um, they've always been very positive and successful. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Ms. Grothy. Yeah, I have a question. Thanks mm -hmm. for telling us about the bullying summit that you're having on the 25th. I was going to ask if Evidium is, is in integrated with that um, bullying summit because we were um, reported last week or that the um, schools are doing that. So that's that's great news. And I'm glad you're doing that. Um, how many kids are in the club and when do you meet? Okay, so this year, like I said, there's about 75 kids in the club and we currently are meeting during flex, um, usually every other week okay. um, via Zoom. Um, and the teachers in the middle school have been very supportive. Um, usually if there's a couple kids in there, Flex, they kind of sit away so they're not disturbing other people or they go to different places in the building that they can kind of be put on headphones and, and go. I will tell you um, one of the days and I don't know what day it was, I believe it was we had snow and I had a, a meeting scheduled and I still had 40 to 45 kids show up for our meeting. I wasn't going to cancel it and I was very impressed by that. So um, like I said, even though we're Zooming, it's working. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Um, was my last question uh, how how can the board support the movement um, so we always are are seeking donations for the state level club um, the state level club obviously being a nonprofit we run off donations we we run off um, just any anything we can get so that's one way um, the other way uh, like I said is we will hopefully soon have the masks. I, I'm getting a bunch of masks shipped to me. This is in no way a fundraiser. It's just that would support because I feel like word of mouth is also a great, great way for this club to be pervasive in the community. Um, one, of my, one of my goals as a president of this 
this organization now is to really get Avitam out in the limelight. Um, I don't think many people know about it. The only people that do know about it are people that probably are within schools. Um, so that is one one of my goals while I'm president of the board to do. Great. And congrats. Thank on that. you. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Gemma. So thank you so much, Mr. Heise. It's, it's really good to see you actually. Yeah. Um, so to recruit kids in there or how do kids co come to join? That is a perfect question. Is to do kids are does a member refer somebody if if they if they know that there's a bullying victim that might mm -hmm. need to join? Like how how does that work? So there is a fine line between this club being a place for kids to come and being a help to everyone, very fine line. So at the beginning of this school year, um, shortly into September, I usually get on announcements with one or two of the officers that were elected the previous year. Um, and we talk about what a VITAM is, um, what it does. Um, and from there, we usually get a ton of new interest in the club. Um, then as we go throughout the year, I never turn anyone away. Um, people can join, but then I have another kind of rally to, for membership in January, about halfway through the year. Now, if a, if a student is interested, there is a contract that they have to fill out because, I mean, they are basically an ambassador to showing these four things. And at the first couple meetings, we usually talk about that. We embed that into our ideas and our thinking. Um, you know, kids are kids. They mess up. But for the most part, um, they are committed to the cause. I just, I love this presentation and this group, and I just feel like this is such a powerful, powerful thing. And I, I see that, I see this going nationwide, mm -hmm. actually, eventually. We're close. Yeah. We're close. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Lewis. Yeah, I just want to say thanks. Um, I, uh, four years ago, when we first were briefed on what was, this was starting up, I thought, man, this is awesome. And it is, it is the right answer. So the fact that you've grown and flourished during those four years is thank you, very incredible. And not telling you anything you don't know, but in my past experience, whenever there is a you know a suicide or something horrible, people know, and but it's you know they don't get help. And so the fact that there's a, an informal process that, if nothing else, gets kids referred to something formal, mm -hmm. is is very powerful. Mm -hmm. So. And the I, life, I really appreciate that. The life sustaining ideas that we promote are what guides the club. Thank you. Anyone else? Ms. Cobb. This, this is a question for Mr. Grove or Dr. Snell. These principles seem to be things that are relevant to all of the school, not just specific and I know we have social and emotional emphasis is there anything similar to the kinds of things Mr. Heisey was talking about that's actually part of curriculum in classrooms to talk about things of this nature yeah I think Mr. Heisey spoke to the responsive classroom so it's more of a philosophy it's foundational principles the classroom meeting every morning where the little ones get together with the teacher and they they talk. Uh, I just participated one at Roundtown the other day, so pretty neat. Um, so I don't know if we have, per se, a curriculum that's designated just for social emotional learning, but we have a litany of support systems that um, will echo those things that uh, you just latched onto and said they are of importance. And I just side note, Mr. Heise, today, uh, Ms. Billman makes sure that we're always doing trainings. And today I did the suicide training and the protective factors and a litany of different things that you just said were absolutely parallel. And Lakeside, when we went to mental health training last year, again, parallel. So um, clearly there's a lot of work in looking at what research says is our best practices. So again, I, I, I personally say thank you. And hopefully that answered the question, Ms. Guth. Okay, nothing else? Uh, again, I would like to thank you very much for coming in and sharing. I, I think everyone enjoyed your presentation immensely and your students. Thank you so much. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Um, moving on, before we move on to our um, 
the treasurer's report. I do want to make a note that we will have a brief executive session to, to address some legal matters. And then also I would like to um, let everyone know that Ms. Brooks Say is here from Stock and Leader. Uh, Mr. Vahoka could not be here this evening, so she is uh, sitting in and representing them. <clears throat> At this point, um, I would like to have Ms. Guth, the treasurer's report, please. Okay, the specifics of the revenue and expenses are on the screen. Um, the important reference to this is, again, we find ourselves in a position eight months through the year that we're ahead of last year in terms of the amount of revenue we've collected. And this is through February, and the actual shutdown last year didn't happen until March. And so it's compared to a previous year where there was no pandemic influencing the thing. So we, we have the luxury of having a district where people have been continuing to fund our efforts. And at this point, we're 1.2 million, roughly $1.2 million uh, ahead of last year in our cash balance. Um, so we, Again, keep looking ahead to how the rest of the year is going to unfold. And now that we're this far into it, the likelihood of surprises is getting smaller and smaller. And so our projections of how this year will end are becoming more firm. Um, and as we said, or as I've said in many meetings in the past, um, our budget is pretty much on target. We have that one issue of the um, cyber school tuition that continues to be an issue, but we are moving ahead with other things that will compensate for some of that. We're not exactly sure where that's gonna end, but all in all, we're on target with the budget and have made pride uh, strides with collections. As far as, let's see, revenue, we are, we've collected 80.6% of our revenue, 96% of local revenue, which is our major source, and the state and federal revenue is either fixed as it was in the state, but then the federal, we've gotten some extra payments as a result of um, stimulus and don't know yet where that's gonna end in this year. And expenses, as I said, the only one that's of concern is the um, cyber school. And hopefully this will be the year when the legislature takes up the funding formulas for cyber so that it won't continue to be a serious draw, drain on revenue or on increase in expenses. So I have nothing up further if anyone has any questions. Mr. Kessler will answer that most likely. <laughs> Is that, Mr. Strickler. Yes, um, Mr. Kessler, just uh, a question on Vicki's, uh, Ms. Kuth's um, latest mention there about stimulus. I have some other questions that I'll say for later on in the agenda. How much of unbudgeted stimulus or stimulus related monies have come in? Is there so nothing for well? I shouldn't say nothing. Um, we budgeted all of the federal dollars that we knew for this 2021 year. They're accounted for and budgeted. We did at the start of this year, and as I look as as Dr. Lugway, our special education directors here, we did receive two small grants: the ATSI grant, fifty, sixty thousand or so that we again we bought some software with, and we're doing other things for the high school. And then there was a smaller, just specific to special education grant, maybe 30, or I could be off, maybe 30, 38,000. Those were two unbudgeted of which we have to spend all those dollars to pretty specific ways. So we'll have the exact expenses for that unbudgeted revenue, equal offset. Everything else was budgeted in this year. And then I know Mr. King will have his report later tonight. I know as part of our budget workshop, the new, new SR3 money we'll talk about for the next two years, what we'll do with that. All right, that's helpful, thank you. Anyone else have anything for Ms. Scott? Okay, at this point, it's recommended that the board approve the treasurer's report as presented. So moved. Second. 
Any discussion? Any votes to the contrary? Motion passes. Moving on to Superintendent Board Secretary Correspondence. Do we have anything, Dr. Snell or Mr. Kessler? I have two letters, a um, well, cardinal letter. Um, one is from uh, Senator Arnold's uh, wife. Uh, we, as a district, made a donation uh, in memory of his passing. Uh, so I'll share that card with you, and I will also share, we received letters from members of the Senate uh, regarding some cautions, concerns regarding uh, COVID funding um, that's coming down the line. So I'll share that ar around the table. And so that, so we posted the one letter, uh, was posted as a PDF that we received um, from Senator uh, Kristen Phillips Hill. And then um, there were two emails since this last Monday, and so we noted those that were received. Um, and then Ms. Johnson has responded to those uh, community emails that we received as well. So that's the correspondence so far. Thank you very much. At this time, we're ready for our first uh, public uh, comment. As we said, there is an opportunity for the public to share a comment with a hand raised via Zoom. Mr. Billet is going to come forward. I presume you have, oh, you don't. We, we don't. I just simply wanted to show you that it is working so that, um, you know, so um, that's the reason for coming up here. We have three folks online on the Zoom right now. Uh, Emma Olney, our board rep, is one of them. She's prepared to talk a little bit later at her report. Um, and so no one else has their hand up at this point. But I did want you all to see that it actually is working as we had planned. So thank you. Thank you very much. And I, I think we've transitioned out of the correspondence, but I just wanted to double check with Mr. Kessler, that I don't skip anything Do important this evening. Oh, you got a hand up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, please share. Okay. So you can, you can turn it down. You can. Yep. Okay, Riley, um, if you are there, you can unmute your microphone and address the board, please. Hi. Can, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Riley Satter, and I go to Central New York Middle School. As a swimmer, part of Sierra, I have been really hurt by not being able to train in our pool. It is not the same as has caused me stress during this. Hold on one second. No problem. I'll go ahead. During this year, and I have not been able to train properly. I am one of the swimmers most affected with my time in the pool being cut more than half of the time that it has used to been. I swam in the meet this weekend and I struggled with my starts. This is one of the many things that I missed from practicing in our pool. We, are, we do not have the facility to practice in that is no anywhere close to what we had in the high school. Please consider allowing us to come to the high school and start practicing again. Okay, thank, thank you, you, Riley. Thank you very much. Any other hands floating around? Not right now, no, we're good. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so um, moving along at this time, um, we are going to um, sort of segue off of that. If you remember last week, we um, had a number of comments shared um, via mail with the board uh, regarding uh, facilities, in particular, um, the Central York Aquatics, um, eager to get back in the pool. Um, so we did task the administration to go back and look at our rental policy, the students we rent to, and how we might be able to um, accommodate um, a re-entry back into something a little bit more normal to, for our um, students in the community. So at this, this point, I believe Dr. Snell has Let me a just, report. Thank you, ma'am. I'll just kick it off and turn it over to Mr. Kessler, who uh, has worked well with his team to put together the following outline for you um, and, uh, you know, walk you through a path forward to uh, resuming. Mr. Kessler. Certainly. So again, um, several of us involved uh, worked with Ms. Billman when we get to some protocols and HR items here. Um, Marty Trimmer, athletic director, um, Kat Lane, our aquatics director, and a couple other people involved. So um, building off of where we've come from, uh, if you go all the way back to last March, uh, we've been closed for all rentals, uh, all community groups, anything non-school related, we've been closed um, both inside and outside, uh, you know, outside grounds, inside facilities, that type of thing. So um, where we're at now, I'll walk down through a couple of bullet points. Again, our teams talked about um, some options to 
Uh, now that things are um, transgressing and, and getting better as we go throughout um, our community, um, looking at uh, the first group, so who would be impacted um, outside of all of the different amounts of items and people that use our groups, um, we would look to roll out local groups defined by our policy, which are 67% residents. So looking to open up first to district resident primarily sponsored groups, and that sort of relates to the second one, um, looking to open it up to all outside fields and natatorium use. So to start with that, um, as we get down to the bottom here, um, looking at the end of April, uh, all rentals, as I jump ahead, uh, when we get to the last bullet point, have to be approved by the school board. And so no rentals have been approved since well before last March. Um, and so building up to our April school board meeting where we would bring back rental requests from SIA, Lacrosse Club, um, Panthers Soccer, and uh, Little League, MTAA, other baseball groups, York Little League and stuff that would be outside grounds and natatorium. Um, and so that's where our focus is um, to get going here before the school year ends. As far as safety protocols, uh, again, obviously working with Ms. Billman, um, each group would have to follow what our Central York protocols would be from self-checks, sign-ins, temperature checks, those types of things. Um, and whether it's visitors allowed or not, um, you know, if there's any guidelines for inside or uh, outside at this point. And as those start to unwind or lessen as well, we'll be fluid with what that means come April here. Um, natatorium, we would require an event staff person. Um, so again, we, you know, they, they wear the Central York orange staff shirts. Um, we have several of them approved. We're looking to have more that we would have one of the, our own event staff person at the door um, each night when any in, indoor use would be um, needed. We would need as part of the rental agreement, uh, a coordinator or the person that would be of contact for each night um, from the group, um, whether it's SIA or again, any outside groups as well. And then we do have, um, Gareth had worked with Ms. Billman, we have a administrative regulation 707.3 that is our actual rental form. And so Gareth gave us a short two or three sentences um, that we would look to include with that where the applicant or organization further agrees it's the responsibility for understanding and complying with and enforcing all applicable public health requirements from federal, state, and local governments, including but not limited to face coverings requirements, capacity limitations, social distancing, and screaming, screening of participants for symptoms. So that'll be inserted on top of our already um, form that they attest to that they'll, you know, follow the no smokings and everything else that were required. So um, we have that updated and ready to go. Staffing being the biggest one, again, working with our buildings and grounds department primarily, um, making sure when we are on the inside that we would have uh, available um, staff to clean before and after, especially after um, the areas that would be used. Um, we made the note here, um, you know, CYSD would reserve the right to cancel an event or a use if we were unable to have the staff similar to we've done with school, um, either based on cases or lack of staff available. Um, again, event staff will be scheduled. Some other considerations to again, rolling out here the end of April, allowing the, the natatorium and all outside grounds to open up. Um, if a, again, if a renting group goes through the protocol process and they would have a case or a, a claim, they'd work with Ms. Billman, go through the contact tracing and, and everything just like we do. And then we will start to, as either they would come in or really look at once the school year's done, which will have been our focus, June 7th, what does that mean then for auditoriums? There's a lot of summertime shows that take place, community uh, performances. And so getting school year done with, then could we have the opportunity to open up auditoriums and gymnasiums for summertime leading up into the fall, hopefully being back to our normal rental process. And the last bullet point there again, April 19th is the next action meeting. And so I have already reached out and started working with the coach from SIA, getting schedules and some other things, um, working with, again, our aquatics director and, and athletic director to bring back um, rentals that we could approve by April 19th that they could start immediately after. So that's where we're at. Be happy to answer any questions, take um, thoughts, concerns, uh, but that's our current recommendation right now. 
Thank you, Mr. Kessler. I'll open it up to um, the board if there's any questions. I do appreciate the time and effort to go in and look at uh, the facilities. I know there's a lot to do. So uh, at this point, Ms. Gemma. Thanks, Brent. Um, so as far as a typical year without COVID, when we go through the rentals, do we do that? Is, it, are we, is the calendar right now, are we on target with that, with April 19th being the action meeting where this needs to get approved for usage? Uh, yeah, I think it sort of, it depends. I mean, we have rentals that come forward every single month to the board. Marty Trimmer's big groups are usually approved in February for the spring slash summer. Yeah. So we're a little behind, but yeah. it's really the summer group, the little leagues, lacrosse and other things that will still get time here, May, June, and July. Um, so he's working on that. Again, SIA's biggest meets and season is June and July into August. Um, they want to get practice time and get back in there, obviously. So again, getting that started, you know, the end of April, um, and Chris is getting me all of that. So those are the two biggest ones. Um, short of that, it's as needed at, you know, as they come in, whether it's a dance studio or the India association of York, you know, uses a lot mm -hmm. of our, uh, auditorium and cafeteria for mm -hmm. events throughout the year. So so was, did the coach think that April 19th and getting started after that was good timing in preparation for the meets that they want? Yes. To and then they had requested two special Saturday training sessions, the 24th of April and another one in May to get their swimmers back to timing using our pool, starting their evening practices and then gearing back up. Right. So, Cause I was just yeah. thinking, it seems like a long time to wait a month. Um, We're, we are short lifeguards and some staff, um, so we have to get that spun up in the next couple of weeks. Um, some of them have their clearances have lapsed mm -hmm. or other things. So um, while the swimming pool will take a couple of days, but we'll have that ready in the next week or so here. Um, yeah. So we have to wait till the action meeting. We can't pull it. I mean, could we bring it forward on the 12th if there's any rentals at that point? Certainly. If we have the staff and the lifeguards Correct. and get them yep. just to get them yep. started a yep. little bit sooner yep. than the 19th. Yep. Is that a possibility? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I mean, I'd like to see it sooner rather than yep. later. Yep. As soon as they, as soon as we get the rental applications and have everything ready to go, we can definitely bring that forward. Yep. Mr. Wagner. Uh, hopefully a comment and a question. You talked about June 7th, starting to look at the other rentals. And it opens up to my question for Mr. Grove two weeks ago. Is there a chance that some summer camps may be able to roll back into the facilities? And I know it's, this conversation is only two weeks old, so there probably hasn't a whole lot of time to think about that. But if we're going to, maybe we're moving in that direction, hopefully. Yep. And I guess the other question I, and I had this two weeks ago, again, I know it's short notice. Is there any way, has there been any discussion or is there any chance that there could be some community use of the pool for lap swims or lessons as we roll this forward? Yep. If we're going to do this, I think that would be a very, it's a community use. I think it's important as well. If we're going to open the pool, all right, thank you. I, I think, we, um, Mr. Wagner, to follow up on your question, um, we would all love for it to be a fine summer and to have everything. We've told people plan on it in a virtual, but if we can and things continue to get better, if they don't, we'll have to cross that bridge um, and come across that. I think what we're trying to do is to take a look at our, our local groups and make sure that they get in first, but I do not think that the uh, community stuff is far behind as well. We're gonna walk and then run. <clears throat> Ms. Grothy. Hey Brent, um, yes. so how are we gonna communicate to the, to the community that we are opening, uh, we're we're taking rental applications yep. so starting tomorrow. Marty yeah. Trimmer, uh, our athletic director, has his whole list, and he was waiting till after tonight to make sure, again, it's, it's a go. He's going to reach out to every single one of the youth groups that have used our facilities pre-COVID, again, as normally are on his list. He has a list of 20 or so. So he's going to reach out to each single one of them and let them know what do you need? What fields do you need? Where are you at? Schedules, times. And so that's already ready to go. Okay. And, and thank you for all the work putting these, mm -hmm. putting this together for us to discuss. Um, you know, today we had an announcement by the governor stating that um, April 4th is the magic day where he's going to be opening up more um, bars, restaurants, um, and then also inside and outdoor events. So hopefully this will help us. Yep. Very good. Mr. Lowe, Mr. 
I, item 3B, that was the natatorium re requires an event staff person. That's yes. not new, is it? We've always... That no, normal? event staff person would be new. Um, they've had lifeguards or they've had, you know, most of the times it's our aquatics director that's there, sometimes an administrator if necessary. But for swimming pool, just regular rental use practices, there's never been an event person there. Is that in addition to, or, or just a person has to be there to enforce the rules? Is well, that, that would be in addition to okay. everybody else, because this would give us somebody to make sure the check-ins, the protocols, the mask wearing okay. while they exist are being followed. Thank you. Ms. Scott. Uh, the 20 or so contact groups, are they all 67% local? participants yes. yeah so there are a couple that are not that have been 50 50 or that have been charged in the past and so they won't be in the first wave if you want to call it a 1a or whatever they won't it'll just be our truly 99 percent of them are all local and meet that 67 percent. so that's who will be our first opportunity yes okay thank you Gee, i have just one quick question Mr. Wagner. will this require an, uh that we amend the health and safety plan it will not. We reviewed both the health and safety plan and the athletic health and safety plan, and each of those are their own disparate sort of areas. And so, you know, what I really relied on was no visitors and volunteers. But the health and safety plan is really about schooling during the day. Um, so this is sort of an unknown sort of uh, territory that will not require an amendment. I have one more question. Off topic. Gemma. I, but the, safe, the health and safety plan, does that um affect the decision regarding prom and graduation um the health and safety plan again i'm going to say operates and i'm going to look to to miss say as well for the school day okay. um and and what happens there is some stuff on on i think co-curriculars and things that we'll have to go back and look at um but again all of that is also heavily dictated by the governor and what he may or may not do on april 4th so we'll go back and take a look at that there have been a couple of minor edits that i've received from uh gareth over the last month but nothing to bring forward it might be time now to come back in, in april and take a look at that and just say here are some minor adjustments see where we're at on april 4th it probably sounds like there are going to be some more hopefully major adjustments needed and what is the responsibility of the board regarding prom do we have to vote on date do we have to vote if we do have one, is that something that we vote on? Uh, you always do, uh, every May. On the um, prom date. You vote on prom, yes, ma'am, uh, prom and a post-prom. I don't know but that, I, um, I don't know that that's in school code. I think we just have always done that. Okay. And I think it's been more a liability, post-prom, either taking place at our high school, that type yeah. of thing. It's more been a liability. Hey, you're on record as approving it. Right. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? So just to make that clear, we're only we would only vote on the date. We don't vote on how the prom correct right is or where or, or anything like that. Yes, because I think the reason Veronica was bringing it up, there was some chatter over social media saying that the board votes on the event on how that takes place, and that is that's incorrect. No. Is untrue, and I I did yes, shut that down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, one question I do have for you, Mr. Kessler. Um, can we assume that um, the district will be passing the cost along for these additional um, event staff to yes. the rental fee? Correct. And I talked about that with Chris. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Thank you very much. I will look forward to seeing um, more of that next <clears> month. <throat> Moving on to action items. We'll take all education items together. 11.01, .01, it is recommended the board authorize the offering of staff development workshops for the 2021-2022 school year as presented. 11.02, it is recommended the board approve the dual enrollment agreements as presented. <clears throat> Excuse me. 11.03, it is recommended the board award dual enrollment status to all Mansfield University courses offered at Central York High School since June 2020. And finally, 11.04, it is recommended the board approve and update the 2021-22 high school course selection guide as presented. So moved. Second. Any discussion? I, I do have a question about the um, course selection guide. Were we able to modify the course selection guide and provide the learning support in the um, 
in the book? Um, there, based on the conversation, the comment last week, uh, Mr. Kaufman, as I think I followed up with you, has had that conversation and working towards that. If if he does make any sort of amendments to that, we'll bring it forward. Okay. So I do not believe in the last so week. In we, this present book, there is no, because I did look and I couldn't yeah, find it. No. So. Yep. And, and I'll wait for Mr. Kaufman to, to bring something forward. Okay, great. Okay, any votes to the contrary? Motion is passed. Under co-curricular, we have one item, 12.01. It is recommended the board approve the following individuals uh, for athletic co-curricular appointment corrections as presented. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any votes to the contrary? Motion passes. Take all personnel items together. 13.01, it is recommended the board approve the conferences and workshops from March 2021 as presented. 13.02, it is recommended the board approve the following professional substitutes as presented. 13.03, it is recommended the board approve the following bus drivers as presented. 13.04, it is recommended the board approve the following resignation retirements as presented. 13.05, it is recommended the board approve the following transfer as presented. And finally, 13.06, it is recommended the board approve the individual for employment as presented. So moved. Second. Any discussion? The only question that I, I have is um, the professional substitute. What is the going rate? For a sub in our district, Miss Billman, Mr. Kessler, one. Yeah, day to day rate. Yeah, is it one hundred and ten? I don't know. Let's not mind. Yeah, I want to say one ten. <laughs> yeah. Uh -oh. There we go. So I just want to make sure everybody can hear me. So there's a couple of different rates. So the first, um, up to twenty days at someone subs, I believe it's one hundred and five this year. Is it 110 this year? I know it just changed. And then after they hit that 20 day mark, then they go up to 115. And then we have dedicated subs who come to a certain building every single day. They're paid at a slightly higher rate. And then our extended term subs who cover for like a, an FMLA or something like that, um, they're an even higher rate. So there's a couple different layers um, that the professional subs could be paid depending on what role they're playing. And how is that compatible to like West York and Suburban and... It, I'd have to pull the exact numbers. We, we check every single year. We, we come together between superintendents and HR folks. We're always double checking with each other. Other than the city, which has always been a lot higher, mm -hmm. most of us are, are, we stay right together because we know we're kind of hurting each other and we try to, to, we try to stay within, you know, the $5 range of each other. So um, every year we check with each other and try to, you know, move things accordingly. So if too many groups are moving, then the rest of us try to keep up so that we're, we're able to compete properly. Okay. The reason I'm asking is someone had commented to me that our rate is lower than, a, and you mentioned it, York City, mm -hmm. and then West York, and says that our district, even though their kids are in this district, are our third yeah. choice because of the pay. Yeah. So this, the city pay, pays a good bit more than all the rest of the districts, just because I think of their circumstances trying to attract people to compatible. come and sub. Um, West York does some different things. We we try to keep up with them, but they also do some different incentive things. Um, flat fee, like bonus, almost like payments for some of their subs. It's a little bit different. They're the only district in New York County that I'm aware of that does that. Um, it makes them a little bit <clears> unique, <throat> but the rest of us are all pretty much in the same range for the different daily rates. Okay. We've tried to keep the daily rate as comparable as possible. Once you do 15, 20, that starts to get away and that may be somewhat, but we try to stay very close with the daily rate. Any other discussion? Any votes to the contrary? Motion passes. Before you go on, I just wanted uh, to give a shout out to um, some of our retiring teachers. Um, there will be obviously a recognition in May, but um, I have to give a special shout out to Pat Shriver, of course, because my children are all in their late 20s now or mid 20s. And, um, you know, I'm an East End family here. So Stony Brook has been our home. And, um, as um, I'm sure many of you on the other side of town are going to um, be saying goodbye to some longtime, um, well-committed and very loved teachers. Uh, so that's up.
So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Strickler. Yeah, just a, a couple of questions for Mr. Kessler. Um, uh, first on the revenues, the year-to-date revenues summary. The uh, subsidies for non-ed programs, I see that's uh, a greater collection than budget. Can you just remind us what that is uh, attributable to? Can you say that again? Which one was that? Uh, the subsidies for non-ed programs, oh, okay. I believe, is we've collected year-to-date well above the yes. entire budget. I see that. Yep. Um, so non-educational, um, I'd have to look and see if that's where any of the gr state grant money is going. Um, and I, I can gladly follow up with you because off the top of my head, I I don't know what yeah, is in that follow. number, but we are well ahead of what we had budgeted. Yep. Appreciate yep. that. Um, yep. Just broadly speaking, as we look to the balance, I know that you spend a lot of time and are, are uh, well ingrained in tracking all this. You think for the for the balance for the for the whole budget period by the end of June, uh, do you expect us to, from a revenue standpoint separately to be over budget, greater than budget? Yes. Revenue? So on the revenue side, we'll receive more than the um, ninety four point seven that we had anticipated. Yes, sir. And then we're going to go over on the expenses as well. And so that's where we have savings in some other categories um, that we're hoping to mitigate. And again, generating more revenue, receiving more revenue than we had budgeted will also help that expense side. Right. Um, and do you have an approximation of where you think you're gonna land? No, nope, I can get that for you. Not off the top of my head, um, but I know we are ahead on the revenue overall. I'm happy happy to get yeah, that. It looks like it's, I mean, it, uh, just on that line alone, it looks like it would more than compensate for the cyber. So yep. just just a little bit of color at your convenience. Now Certainly. On where we see revenues coming out by the end of the budget period, where we see expenses, those two separate pieces, just yep. to get a little bit of sense yep. um, how we're landing. And certainly that, that also dovetails with our forthcoming discussions on the budget. Yep. Okay. Certainly. Thank, thanks for that. Any other discussion? Any votes to the contrary? Motion passes. Item 14.02, it is recommended the board approve the employment contract of Mr. Brett A. Kessler as business administrator of the Central York School District for a period of July 1, 2021 through June 30, 2026. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Any votes to the contrary? Motion passes, and uh, thank you, Mr. Kessler, for your help, and um, we look forward to continued working with you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Item 14.03, it is recommended the board approve the agreement with Principal Kafale Consulting, LLC, as presented. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Ms. Guth. Um, I don't think we received any more information than we had last week. If we did, I didn't receive it. And so I just want to reiterate, I have absolutely nothing against the speaker or even the subject. I just don't feel that the subject, as it was presented, the essence of the speech is appropriate for a celebration of diversity. And so I, I will have to vote no. I also, have a, I also have a comment. Um, I agree with Vicki on this, that I don't see how that is part of a celebration. I Last week, I asked for a copy of the speech. I changed my mind on that because I was asked to trust the administration that it will not uh, contain uh, themes of CRT and divide based on skin color and have it be more of a celebration. And that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to trust the administration that it will be on subject of diversity celebration and not anything that has themes of division. Thank you. Any other discussion? Mr. Strickler. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm re reflecting on Dr. Snell's um, comments um, last Monday on the uh, the diversity speaker and his comments that led me to believe that he, he feels it will be uplifting and motivational. 
um, and that it'll be applicable to all, all diversity rather than slices in between. Um, and if that's the case, uh, I support that. Despite my reservations from a fiscal standpoint, I think it's a little bit pricey. I'm going to go ahead and vote in favor of the speaker. I would like to just offer one brief comment, though, on something I heard uh, said last Monday, and, and that is as follows. During the discussion of the, the, the um, diversity speaker, quote, it's not about equality right now. It's not about equality right now. And this is fresh in my mind because one month ago, I stood right here, raised my right hand, and pledged to uphold and support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of Pennsylvania. And I just want to point out that equality underpins our U.S. Constitution and our Pennsylvania Constitution. Um, and in my view, I just want to say for everyone, every day is about equality. Thank you. Mr. King. I agree with Mr. Strickler as far as the, from the standpoint of, I have a concern with the $2,000 uh, contract, but I will be voting in support of, I just think we could have done uh, better in, in finding a speaker with a, uh, lower price tag and i do and i understand you know question was answered that it fell within uh the budgeted amount at just two thousand dollars especially in this climate seems like a lot to be paying for a speaker miss grothy yeah i i want to echo um kyle's sentiments i i also agree that this is a, a high price speaker um especially during this time my only question to either dr sell or mr grove is how is this speech going to be used? Um, I know that it will be used during the diversity celebration, and this is a virtual event, which may um, not have very high attendance. Um, is this gonna be recorded, or is this something that you'll share with <clears throat> the staff, or is this just up to people to watch at that time? It will be recorded. So we could reuse that at, 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 as we see fit. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at this point, I have a um, couple comments. Can I say something? Is there another comment? Yes. Oh, I, do. I do. Dr. Snell. So let me just say a couple of things. I, I, um, I certainly believe in the speaker's message. I believe in uh, equality, but I also believe in equity. And, um, you know, I believe in equity enough that, you know, you just can't say it's all equal and we're not going to take care of kids that need additional this or that or have been marginalized because of this or that. So it's about equity. Um, and uh, so, you know, nobody is around this table is all taking a, a oath to uphold the Constitution. I don't, I don't think that's the issue around equality. I think it's around what do our kids need, what do they deserve, and how do we provide those supports for our kids. So it is about equity. Um, let me also say that none of my comments of assurance should be taken to mean that he will not say things, present material in such a way that you might feel, um, uh, you know, whether you want to call it offended on your heels, um, you know, just push to think differently about um, who we are as a community and a bunch of white people sitting around this table, if I may say it bluntly. I think what he will do is challenge all of us to think deeper and darker about what equity means. Um, and that's the message. So do not take anything that I've said in an assurance that you will not, you know, slightly be offended, slightly be pushed. I wouldn't bring a speaker on this topic that wouldn't challenge all of us. I don't care what your walk of life is, um, to think differently and to, th and to think about how we can provide whatever it is our kids need, which is really equity. Um, and I'm not just going to sit down and, and hunker down around equality uh, on a diversity celebration. It's about equity. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Snell. Okay, at this point, um, I think any votes to the contrary would be Ms. Guth. Are we making a note of that? I just changed my vote. It's no. Ms. Gemma and Ms. Guth will have a no vote to our speaker for the record. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, uh, motion passes. Next item under policy will take the first one, 15.01. It is recommended the board approve the final adoption of the following policies as presented. So moved. 
Second. Any discussion? So I think everybody knows where I stand on this. I will be a no. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, motion passes. Item 15.02. It is recommended the board approve the tentative adoption of the following policies as presented. Yeah, first. So moved. Hello. Second. Any discussion? Ms. Scott. I would just like to say, since this is the first reading, there is going to be a policy committee meeting before the next final or second reading. So I would encourage any board member who has an issue or a question to contact probably me as the chairperson and we will take your comments into consideration when we discuss these further. Ms. Grothy. When, when is that policy meeting scheduled? It's scheduled for March 22nd. I may be in a position where I need to change that though because of other scheduling issues. I'll let you know. It'll be within a few days of that okay, date. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, any votes to the contrary? Motion passes, we'll see these for final adoption. Well, we'll be back for a second reading April 12th. Motion passes, and now on to board reports. Oh, I, okay, I was wondering, I was like, you don't look like Emma. Oh, uh, no, I'm... <laughs> okay, I, we're going to start with no, our student I'm... board representatives. I believe we'll probably be starting with Emma, and she's on the line. Yep. A Emma, if you want to go ahead and unmute, you can uh, share your report with the board, please. Um, so first, I wanted to talk a little bit about the activities of the National Honor Society at our high school, because I think we're doing some really cool things. So last week, we finished up an initiative to create fun gift bags for our janitorial and custodial staff. So NHS members donated relevant items and members of our committees assembled them. So we just did that because we wanted to express our gratitude for their hard work keeping our school clean this, this school year. Also, our service committee has partnered with the SPCA. And we will be collecting items until March 31st to donate to animals, utilizing an Amazon wish list format to maintain COVID guidelines. And finally, we are recruiting volunteers to help with the YMCA's annual campaign. Um, so it raises the money it needs to deliver its charitable programs to the community. And that includes financial aids, aquatic um, activities, the new America, American Welcome Center, Southern Community Service, and more. So um, essentially, volunteers would be helping to call potential donors. Also, Minithon has been doing a lot this year with fundraising um, despite COVID. So this past month, they've been doing a lot of local fundraisers with restaurants such as Chipotle. And they are currently wrapping up a cake pop sale ending March 19th with the order form in their Instagram bio. Uh, their Instagram handle is CYHS Minithon. And they will also be holding a virtual paint night, which is kind of like a class favorite. Um, and registration will be ending on March 25th. And that is also located in their Instagram. And then finally at the high school, we've been doing a lot with the virtual job board within our career center. Mm -hmm. So they, every year they push out some wonderful opportunities for people to get involved in and try their hand and learn about different potential careers. So, for example, manufacturing careers information is going to be happening Thursday, March 18th at 10 a.m. That's sponsored by the Manufacturers Association. And then Mechatronics is happening next day on March 19th at 10 a.m. with the York County School of Technology. So those are just some great opportunities going on at the high school right now that I wanted to share. Thank you very much, Emma. Did we have any comments for Emma? I don't know how we would even do that, but <laughs> thank right. you so much. Yep. Do we have Sarah on the line? We do. Thank you, Emma. Our uh, junior Sarah, class if, representative. Yep. Sarah, if you go ahead and unmute, you can uh, share your report, please. Hi, everyone. Um, although I can't see 
Um, I can see you. You guys can't see me, but that's okay. Um, as of right now, nothing really new has been happening at the high school. Um, I do think that's somewhat good because we are officially a year in a pandemic, which is crazy to think about. Um, the girls' basketball team went to the district championships last week, and they played a hard game against Cumberland Valley. Even though they didn't win, they played a great game, and they had a great season overall. Other sports news is that the ice hockey team, which is there, they call themselves CY Puck, hasn't um, had an official league this year, but they have been doing scrimmages and having some time on the ice to play. Additionally, the high school is offering the ASVAB on Thursday, April 22nd to any interested 11th grader. The ASVAB test ultimately measures a young student's strength and potential for success in military training. This is an amazing opportunity for students who are interested in enlisting or looking at any military education after high school or looking for any ROTC scholarships. The last thing that I have to report is that JROTC is starting practices back up for LDRs and they're assembling teams for the Raiders team and also doing practices for color guard to start to getting cadets more involved during this time. But that's everything that I have. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Any comments for Sarah? Okay, moving on. Uh, we're gonna go to York County School of Technology, Mr. Lewis. We had a uh, maybe 20 minute meeting on Zoom that was very mundane and uh, really nothing to report, just some hiring, but uh, things are rolling real good at the tech school, so. Thank you very much. Anything for Mr. Lewis? Your County School Technology Authority, Mr. Beaver, I believe we received some correspondence uh, in the last week on an update of uh, the gymnasium and some other things, uh, their budget, et cetera. Anyone have any questions? Okay, moving along. Uh, Legislative Committee, that would be Mr. King. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. So first, as far as from a federal uh, side of things, it was just announced uh, within the last few days, obviously, with the uh, president signing of another round of stimulus money that there will be approximately 5.27 to 5.4 million dollars uh, likely coming to the Central York School District. Um, at this point in time, and I've had a brief conversation with Mr. Kessler, um, that uh, he and the administrative team will certainly present options on April 7th at our first budget uh, workshop as we begin that process and what that looks like. Um, and that funding uh, can be spent over the course of a two-year period. So we would have up through the 2023 school year to uh, expend those funds. So uh, we'll certainly await uh, more information from the district. Um, update to um, our last meeting. Obviously, everyone's well aware um, of this, but teachers, administrators, and school personnel uh, were prioritized to begin receiving the Johnson & Johnson one-shot vaccine, and I believe that started last week. Um, as far as on uh, continuation on the state side, uh, the state Senate education and Health and Human Services Committees conducted a joint hearing uh, on education during the COVID-19 pandemic. The goal of the hearing was to discuss how to move forward and get students back in the classroom in a safe and responsible way. The committee heard from both secretaries of health and education, as well as teachers, students, and various organizations. Among topics discussed were concerns with standardized testing, which is something which has come up uh, here uh, before, the need for mental health support for students, which was timely with our educational focus this evening from Mr. Heisey, uh, and uh, well, delivery of special education, and the need for cyber charter funding reform. Uh, the following bills were approved by the House Education Committee. House Bill 365, which would be updating the school code terminology, would update and correct outdated terminology and phrases in current statute relating to mental health and physical or developmental disabilities, which are now antiquated and or considered disparaging. House Bill 412 
regarding substitute teachers would address substitute teacher shortages by allowing individuals holding day-to-day -day permits to serve as substitute for more than one educator as long as each assignment does not last more than 20 days and to allow individuals to serve in any certificate area. The bill would further eliminate the expiration deadline for the substitute teacher program for prospective teachers, thus making this program permanent. Finally, the legislation would extend the time each school year that an individual with an, interact, which is, with an inactive certification may be employed as a substitute from 90 days to 120 days. House Bill 232, and I'm not uh, suggesting this happen, but House Bill 232 is a school district name change, allows a school district to change its name by a majority vote of the local school board of directors of the school district and the approval of the Department of Education. The bill was amended to require a two-thirds vote to the board of school directors. House Bill 416, seizure training would enable all school personnel to be trained in seizure recognition and response by an approved Department of Health online course and make the completion of such creditable and for professional continuing educational credit. Charter school reform bill, House Bill 272. This legislation contains components of the charter reform package recently called for by Governor Wolf. And then a reminder that we will have, or the PSBA will be having a spring virtual advocacy day on March 22nd. And we will be having a meeting with Representative Stan Saylor and Keith Gillespie on March 25th at 11 a.m. And I believe that is virtual, correct? That is virtual. So if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to entertain that. Or if anyone would like more information and I do not have it, I will certainly get that for you. Ms. Grothy. What was the date again for the Keith Gillespie and? March 25th. The March 25th, 25th at 11 a.m. Because I think we were looking at the 24th was thrown around out there. Um, I um, initially said the 24th, but it is the 25th. We double check. So. Okay, so 325 at 11 a.m. Thank you. Okay. If there's nothing else moving on to Lincoln Benefit Trust. Mr. There, Kessler. There was no meeting this month. We meet again the end of April. Thank you. York Adams Academy. Is that Ms. Gemma? Who's York Adams? Is that you? Ms. Gemma? I know I looked and you had your head down. I didn't know you were responding. Good evening. Um, so York Adams Academy, we got word that Chris Fultz, our director, has resigned. Um, he is going on to um, do different things. We um, got a report that they continue to do post-secondary presentations. Uh, this week they had your county School of Technology come and present the available programs, the cost, um, which shows to be half price of many similar programs that they can get elsewhere. Plus this has 90% job placement rate. And you can also um, work as you learn. Thaddeus Stevens came and they presented their GRIT programs, which stands for Girls Rocking It in Trade and Technology. 90% of the girls' student body showed up to hear the presentation um, to talk about those career opportunities. Sounds great to me. Um, the Navy also came and presented the bright futures that await um, while serving in our great military. They're continuing to look for new staff. Currently, they're obviously looking for a new director. Brent, did they start that search yet? Yep. How's that going? Do we know? It's underway. Okay. <laughs> it's advertising out there. Okay. So, and then we're also looking for secondary math teacher and other secondary certified teachers. And as of right now, for the end of this year, we have um, 25 students ready to graduate. Sounds wonderful. Sounds like a lot of great stuff going on. I wish I could be part of GRIT, but I think yeah. I'm probably, it's probably an age cutoff on that. Uh, anyone else have anything? Any comments from, from Ms. Gemma? Okay. Thank you very much. Moving on. Um, we are going to Central York Diversity Advisory Group. Um, Mr. Grove. 
Thank you, ma'am. Uh, the diversity committee met on Tuesday, March 9th. All three subcommittees uh, convened and then they reported out as normal. So good work being done. Uh, the next meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, April 13th from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. It's virtual, so any community member that wishes to join, uh, please contact me and I'll gladly set you up. Uh, the 13th is a preview for the diversity meeting. With that being said, uh, please save the date uh, for the annual diversity celebration Wednesday, April 28th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. It will be virtual. And again, I say thank you to the board for our diversity speaker. Uh, we look forward to the opportunity. It will be uh, recorded, and our hope is that it could be accessed multiple times for those that couldn't normally attend a brick-and-mortar event. Maybe this one will uh, bridge it and uh, help us reach more of our community members. That concludes my remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grove. Any comments from Mr. Grove? Any questions? Okay, moving on to Mr. Wagner, Lincoln Intermediate A uh, couple things from the IU. I guess it was maybe two weeks ago, somewhere around there. Um, we spent four hours in a negotiation session and Dr. West is part of all this going in and out. And the next day, the whole vaccination thing dropped with the IUs as the center of it. And we, you know, he didn't drop it that night to us and just realizing that happened. It's been a really busy time out there for their staff trying to do what they're doing on that end of it and hopefully continues. I guess there were some glitches on Thursday and Friday of last week, whenever it started of people having to wait longer, people showing up early, but they're working through that. Um, we may be on the tail end of a year and a half of contract negotiations. I'm not sure. Um, I won't be able to be at the Monday night interview piece. We have a session then and a session, I think, Wednesday of that Wednesday of this week as well. The health clinic um, hopefully will be open this summer. Um, they're really making progress in getting that set up at the York Learning Center. A, the IU, like us, is really self-insured. And they're hoping over time, and the actuarials tell them over time, there'll be a lot of savings to the intermediate unit and their health care costs based on this. And they're lo actually looking to maybe down the road open it to some of the surrounding districts, us being one, which could, do some real, which could be some real benefit to us as well. Um, the Joint Authority, I just... We got a, you know, last week we meet next week sometime, I think on the 23rd. So I'll, I'll have a report next month. Thank you very much. Anything for Mr. Wagner? Ms. Grothy. This is actually for Dr. Snell. Um, since you had brought up the vaccinations for our teachers, um, Thursday it was, it was reported to the families and maybe I missed something on Friday that the schedule was only affecting K through six and the teachers through K through eight were eligible for the vaccines. Nine to 12 <clears throat> schedule was not affected. And I'm not sure what was reported on the vaccinations for the high school teachers, but then today we got a message saying that tomorrow is a half day for K through 12. I mean, yeah, K through 12. And then a remote day for the entire district. Sure. Um, possible so to a flex, a FID day. Yeah. So, so what has happened is the first wave of what we assumed would be K to six actually went midway into K to eight. And so we were, I think, 16 teachers short at the middle school. Um, and that sort of played out across all the districts in, in York, Adams and Franklin County. And so we're one of the larger ones. Um, so you can imagine that some of the smaller districts were able to either you already had your shot or you don't want one. And smaller districts were able to, to move through their allotment and have extras. And so you saw a little bit of what I think the uh, IU did a great job, uh, credit to Dr. West and his team, um, aggregating, let's just use a round number, 5,000 doses that they had. And so what happened Friday evening around 6 p.m., which they opened it back up, which got us through the high school. What we did was told all of our high school teachers to move in, and very similar to what we did before, and do everything you can to sign up on the 16th. And so when that happened, that's the decision to mirror the early dismissal and the and the virtual day uh, across the district to make it straightforward for everybody. So, so at great. this point now, we think everybody in the district um, that initially said they wanted it are covered, uh, and a vast majority of them will be on Tuesday. Right. That's awesome. And I'm, I'm happy that more teachers are going to be eligible. My question is, last week when, when we discussed this, and I was going to ask the question if this would affect the school schedule because the vaccinations would take place from 2 p.m. to 9 p.m., <coughs> and I just assumed that no one said anything about the school schedule changing. I just assumed that we were going to run as normal. So did this just happen so fast that we decided to 
yes, the, my decision was to um, go with an early dismissal because there were a number of educators uh, in certain spots that left grade levels unattended. And, and so, you know, one of the things you can do with a high school student is you can put them in the auditorium, um, you know, in a, in a stacked fashion, if you will, much more easily than you can do a kindergarten or a first grader. And so when, you know, our, our faculty members started to take the two o'clock to three o'clock time slot, they need to be out by one. And so it got to a point where we were tripping over each other, trying to figure out what coverage. And when you're talking about, you know, our littlest learners, you don't really give me 150 first graders. And, and that's, you know, that's difficult at best. Let me just say, you've I'll take never, middle school kids. You've any never day. handled 150. Uh, no, not graders. 150 kindergartners. I'll take middle school kids any day. I, I would do that. <laughs> so it just got to a point where we said, you know, in honor of our teachers, we were going to do this early dismissal. Um, now we're just going to do it K to 12 and make it fluid. And, and again, let me just simply say, and I think you would all agree, um, you know, I know that Teacher Appreciation Week and Faculty and Staff Appreciation Week is in May. Um, I really think it's the next couple of days where we say to them, look, we want you to go get vaccinated. We're glad you could finally do it. And we're also going to insulate the district on making a 530 in the morning decision because we're too many teachers down here. It's about 10% what we're hearing folks having some sort of 24 hour temporary reaction. Um, we just didn't want to play the game in the morning. We're, we're the catching parents. We'd rather be up front way out front of that message, and but also give a fine message. Um, I would say to our family and our communities out there, for 150 some days, 30 some days, we've been open just about every day. And, and that's a win for you. The next day and a half are a win for our faculty and staff. And so that's, that's how we approached it. Uh, and that's the decisions that I made. So it wasn't until after the board meeting until you were able to decide yeah, yeah. on that because of the Absolutely. scheduling of the vaccinations mm -hmm. for teachers yeah. the, the, that it was more of yes, a two to three range than a 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. range. Yeah, we knew it was going to be, I think, two to nine or two to 10, whatever that number right. was. And the issue was when would be our day that changed a couple of times. So okay. what we all tried to do as districts is try to put ourselves into a day. Uh, as opposed to having 302 people over a seven day period, that would cause how many folks would be out with additional sickness. And so that was much more of a, of a, of a lift, if you will, than to push everybody into a day for us. And all of that transpired well after last Monday. Yeah, yes, ma'am. So thank you for explaining because sure. I did have parents that reached out to me and were upset that we just had this spring break. And then we went right into the vaccinations, which I sure. do think are important, but mm -hmm. yeah. just I've... wanted that to be explained for the record. Okay. Um, you're done, Mr. Wagner, right? So now we're on to Ms. Um, Guth with the policy committee. As I mentioned earlier, there is a scheduled policy committee meeting for 530 on um, the 22nd, I may have to change that, but it will, whatever it changes to, the notice will go out and we'll know that within the next day or so. Um, when the policy committee meets, we have two policies that we need to consider that already have been put before us. One has to do with the attendance at electronic meetings and the communications. Um, they need to be updated there have been some things that have happened in uh, live stream meetings where the technology goes down and then what do you do with the meeting so that the people are no longer able to observe it. And so we have to clean that up based on what our attorneys have recommended or has been put into place in other places. And the other we've been talking about, and that's the public participation in board meetings, the uh, community um, comments, and we just have to update the policy, the formal policy to reflect the input the board has made and the changes we have instituted. Um, beyond that, we are going to enter into a period of time when we start looking at some fairly basic things. We're going to review the policy that has the authority and powers of the board and the mission statement and vision statement, not necessarily to recommend changes, but to, to be the bedrock of all the policies. They have to all comply or coordinate with our fundamental powers and authorities and our fundamental mission and vision. And with that as the backdrop, then we're gonna start looking at things like curriculum development, academic standards, and the 
controversial issue of textbooks, which we don't use much anymore anyway, so that would have to be updated regardless. Um, to bring them into or into agreement with what the board wants those things to be within its powers and authority because they are clearly stated as board responsibilities. And so basically we're gonna be looking through those. And in the meantime, there will probably be, and Ms. Billman would know, some other drafted things that are being recommended by our attorneys, but they're not on the agenda for this coming meeting. And so that would be in the future. And that's all I have. Thank you very much, Ms. Guff. Any questions for Ms. Guff? We will keep you posted on uh, the <coughs> Monday me meeting and let um, members of that committee know as soon as possible if there is a date change and what the date change will be too. Sounds like there will be. Um, I do want to, <coughs> as one last board announcement, I do want to review very quickly the board vacancy. Uh, we um, Today was a deadline for applications to be submitted to Mr. Kessler. Um, at this point, I believe I saw the email. It has gone out to all board members for a ranking of the uh, the top five candidates on March 22nd, which is next Monday. We will conduct a public Zoom interview at 6.30. All candidates will be notified. Uh, I would say by the end of the week, they will be notified. And then we will come back on March 23rd uh, to open the nominations for a new board member. I wanted to make that information available to the public and anybody on the board. I think you will have all seen this schedule. Okay, moving on. Superintendent's announcements. Dr. Snell, anything for us? A couple of things. Um, number one, just a uh, heads up that we are looking to finalize a survey to our parents regarding learning options for next year. Uh, in a perfect world, we would love for all of our learners to come back. Um, but we also know that historically there have been some that have chosen Central York Cyber Academy. Uh, and now with the remote learning, we are positioning ourselves to at least find out um, who would might uh, who might like to uh, remain in a remote status, whether that's with us, hopefully, uh, either in a remote classroom, uh, Central York Cyber Academy, again, to stem the tide of anybody deciding to go to a third party option out there. Uh, our job, I think, and one of the things the pandemic has shown all public school districts is we need to compete on a level playing field, whether or not we have legislative relief uh, 30 miles to the north or not. And so we're going to begin to survey our families to get a sense of what they're thinking for next year. Um, just to review the April dates for everybody's um, information, April 7th is the board budget workshop in this room. April 12th, we have a board planning meeting. April 14th is a board budget workshop if necessary, a second one. April 19th is our action meeting of the month. We have a town meeting uh, on April 21st, and we finish out the month with Meet the Candidate Night on April 26th. Last thing, I'll do two quick COVID updates. I'll ask Ms. Billman to come forward and sort of just help clarify a little bit of what I attempted to, to respond to Ms. Uh, uh, Grothy's comments regarding vaccinations. I'll let her um, give us a little brief update uh, from the rough week we've all had. Yes, ma'am. Sure. You, you actually did a very good job. So um, we've, we've had a lot of meetings last week with all the different um, changes that happened. Um, to your point, Ms. Grothry, um, by Wednesday of last week, what we thought was going to happen changed again. And then by Friday, we knew we were going to have the opportunity to open it up to all of our teachers. So we've had a lot of communications going out to our faculty. Um, and many of our faculty have found other opportunities, either when they were at a doctor's appointment or um, other um, pharmacies and other things locally. So we had probably over 60 individuals who originally signed up who since the sign up had indicated they no longer needed to. And that's sort of to what Dr. Snell said happening across the dis all districts, why we had the opportunity to pretty much let everybody who wanted it this first round get another vaccine or to get it, get a, another appointment with us. So that being said, we're waiting for information on the second wave. Um, they are going to open it up again for folks maybe who didn't sign up the first time, who changed their minds since last time. We had some individuals that, um, accidentally clicked wrong buttons and they thought they indicated they did, but they really didn't and they weren't letting us change anything with those. So there'll be opportunities for folks to get in this, what we're, we're calling kind of the second wave. As soon as we have information about that, we expect that to happen before the end of the month. So that'll be happening as well for folks. But, um, but yeah, we've, we have um, over almost 450 individuals who um, were able to sign up for vaccines this time around. So that was really great. 
I will credit uh, Ms. Billman for her wonderful work um, in managing the changes that have come down from, you know, uh, Harrisburg through the LIU. And uh, I simply would forward emails by, you know, say probably about 12 all said last week. Um, and she was able to quickly move and make sure that our faculty and staff had the latest information possible uh, and was able to sign up with uh, immediate notice when when the opportunities came up. So congratulations and thank you. She did a fabulous job. I would also um, say again, uh, the IU uh, under the leadership of Dr. Jeff West was fabulous. Um, again, over communicated throughout the whole process, talked us through all of this, collaborated at a great rate um, and showed a level of coordination, communication and collaboration that you know any of us that have been around long enough, it's just proud to, to see. And so credit to Dr. West and that group. Last thing I will mention is the middle school and the case numbers continue to increase. Uh, we have a couple of more that don't show up on the, the uh, tracker. And so in a conversation with the uh, Department of Health today and a state epidemiologist, which means you have more than normal um, when you speak to that person, we will remain closed uh, for the rest of this week at the middle school. I shouldn't say closed. We will go virtual. Um, we are well above the six to 10 threshold. Uh, and that is a 14 day closure per the attestation form um, through this Friday. And again, Saturday, Sunday gets us to 13 days. Uh, and they've said provided we do not continue to increase and we see a drop off, uh, we may resume on Monday. So we'll send that information out here shortly. Ms. Romick uh, virtually is ready to do that. But based on our conversation today with the state, uh, we will remain virtual at the middle school for the next uh, two days, Thursday, Friday, the rest of this week. I'll be happy to answer any questions at this time. Mr. Wagner? Yeah, uh, Dr. Snow, no, I have one. I was going to ask this last week, and then you announced that you were, and this isn't on COVID, so announcing the additional classroom, I guess, at Hayshire. And then I saw your summary, uh, your report on Friday with 45 additional kids coming back from remote to in person. And then I looked at the percentages that are posted right now. It's 86% at Roundtown. And, yeah. Are you looking to do the same thing at any of the other primary buildings because I've been asked. Yeah, so we've, we've taken a look at uh, Hayshire for some assistance. We've taken a look at Roundtown. And when any of those situations come up, I certainly look to Mr. Grove. I know Ms. Billman, as well as Mr. Billet work very closely with the elementary principals. And so on a case by case basis, we have to entertain that uh, almost at a weekly interval, a, a cadence of a weekly conversation that they have to say how many are too many and when do we need to move a teacher here or there? And that happens. It's happened a couple of times. So yes, sir, we'll continue to do so. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. King. Dr. Snell, will, when you're sending the survey out for learning options for next year, will parents of new students to the district, will they somehow be able to participate in that? Or is that just not possible? We will, we will, we will attempt to. Uh, we certainly think it's it's a worthy endeavor and a, and a great suggestion. Um, I think initially we think about our folks that are with us now and have been through the past year with us. Um, but certainly as folks come in or register, we will make sure that we share that with our families. Um, and, and to your point, we're starting to track kindergarten. I think I shared that with you on Friday. Registrations, that's a group that we would also uh, touch in, touch base with as well. Good suggestion. Mr. Lewis. The uh, middle school in our year-long battle seems to be like the quickest fastest spike we've had do yes, we sir. have any idea on the origins or how that happened um no sir um you know i mean i think there's some yeah I, it would be speculative i could simply say it's you know <laughs> rudders or it's the mall or it's you know here or there um, when you see something like that you can also speculate that it might be in school transmission and so again i don't know that any of us have a a real good finger on it you know there's always you know somebody was at somebody's house and, and this was, yeah, I was just wondering if there was a big party that we no, we there are some siblings, you know, but, what yeah. happens is siblings get caught yeah. up in it yeah. as well. And so then that helps the spread and, and those kinds of things. So well, that, I think that I would, that's certainly tracked everything I've seen so far. Kids are getting it at home and not mm -hmm. in school, but obviously this blew up yeah. fast. So it, it's difficult yeah. to prove yeah. exactly where just curious. Thank you. I would add for, on behalf of the board, we've spoken about vulnerable learners and continue to do so. So um, special ed department will be reaching out to parents as they have in the past, making phone calls, emails, so forth, so on. And we'll bring back as many kids as we can bring back so that we maintain that continuity of education for our neediest of learners. So again, that, that happens and you don't always hear that, but every time you hear our school close, if we can get kids back, we're going to bring them back. Thank you. And, and I would just credit 
Mr. Grove and, and Dr. Ludwig as well, the moment we make this kind of a decision, they just go into, you know, automatic mode and, and make sure that our vulnerable learners are taken care of. So it, it, that's, you know, it works pretty well. Ms. Gemma. I just have a question about the contract tracing. Do we know, have there been cases amongst the kids that have quarantined due to contract tracing? What do you... Is that something that, let me turn my... If, if I understand your question correctly, so in other words, if we have a positive case and then we contact trace and then some of those kids end up positive, that has happened on occasion, um, mostly because of um, outside connections, carpooling, um, sports or other co-curricular activities. Um, we know that there's a connection there. So they're on the quarantine because they're also on the same team or they sit near each other on the bus and things like, or because they're carpooling, they're in the same Trace, car together. Traced back to the positive case that Correct. had to quarantine, mm -hmm. caused the quarantine. Yeah. Yeah. I think back to a case, you know, earlier in the year where there was a high school situation where the student was here and, you know, you do your, your, your square footage and, and then another student. But again, I, I wouldn't say a tremendous lot, but there have been isolated cases that you can. Okay. Anything else? Anyone else? Questions? Okay. At this time, we are ready for our second um session of citizen comments and i assume we have one because mr bill it's on his way mr lewis could you hit your mic please oh sorry uh we do have one with their hand up and i apologize in advance i probably am not going to pronounce your name right uh elkana if you go ahead and unmute your microphone you can uh, uh share your comments with the board Both students, I swim for CST swim team. I'm here to represent our team. When we are currently swim, swimming at the when we are currently swimming at the lanes are crowded and procedures are unsafe and that when we perform swim strokes at, such as the backstroke, the that swimming environment we are in is not us set up for competitive swimming and increases the risk of sports injuries. We also lose practice time and due to the limits of the um, present facility. Due to COVID-19, our physical and mental well training is not optimal. Being in our training facility, FCO will bring the best physical and mental training out of our team. Thank you for your time. Have a great night. Thank you. Is that it? Okay. All right. At this time, I am. Um, I think we're at the end of our agenda, except for any board comments. Anybody? Okay. Uh, we will meet for executive session. And at this, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I was just going to um, talk about the um, new board vacancy. Um, in your email, you had indicated. Um, five, bring five candidates forward. With only being eight eight people applying for this position, do you think we could reduce that, especially with two that we've already heard before? Actually, I believe it's more than two that we've already heard from before, but also I think in the interest of timing and the fact that we're coming right in on the back end of this, I think we were trying to, um, you know, uh, I don't want to say expedite the process, but we do want to get someone seated. And I think that, um, you know, if there's an objection to five candidates and somebody wants us to hear eight, I just think that. No, no, that's okay. oh, sorry. I, I don't want to hear eight. I oh. would like to reduce it. And and I think we it is it is true. Correct. We heard from two that you interviewed. Seven of them had applied previously, but we only interviewed two of these okay. ones. Yeah. So, so, so I was just making a comment that maybe we could simplify and maybe do two to four and whatever the board would wish. Okay, I think when we first laid this out about a week ago, when we first took, the, I think we said five. If there's a, anybody else in the group that would like to um, reduce the number, then I can open that up for conversation um, at this time. Ms. Guth. 
I agree there should be fewer because that's just almost like interviewing everybody. And with only eight, I think if each board member picked three or four, it would be an easy transition to figure out who they are and then we could have a more meaningful interview process because of fewer people. Yes, and I understand what you're saying. It's But one of the things is, uh, and again, I'll, whatever the, the board wants to do, I'm fine with. We set up the guidelines not knowing, same time, same as we did before. We didn't know we were going to get 23 applicants, so we said eight. So this time we weren't sure what was going to come back. So we, you know, we established the, the game plan before we sent it out, and I think we discussed it. So at this time, if we have anybody else that wants to change the number, uh, we can do that. But I, I, I thought we had agreed that this was the way we were going to do it moving forward. I would be in support of less. What's less? Whatever. What's the number, people? Whatever the number you guys decide on four. You want to go ahead? I decided on five. Hey, I won't be here, so I'll suggest four. Yeah, I was thinking four. We're going to do four. Anybody have an objection to four? No, I guess my only question would be, do we need, and I'll look to our solicitor, do we need an actual motion and and have an action item if we're going to change what we had directed? Or I, I can't, I, it was never an actual vote. Right. Yeah, if you didn't approve it formally, again, this is okay. the most informal process for filling a vacancy. There's very little in the school code that says you must do X. As long as the board is speaking in one voice as to your agreement, I think we have a message. Yep, great question. Okay, so we're going to move to four candidates. So that means you will slate the numbers will be now one to four, not five. What are the dates of this? Okay. The 22nd, which is next Monday, we'll have a um, public meeting to um, interview the candidates via Zoom. And then that would be the 23rd, which would be the next night. Rankings are due at the end, uh, let's see, by 3 p.m. to the board secretary. One. Correct. Then I'll Thursday yes. contact those top four to invite them for Monday night. Okay. Yes. Any other comments? Okay. Well, at this time, this meeting is adjourned. <coughs> no.